Buonasera, signorina. Buonasera, signor. Ya vado in cerca di lei. Boy, if you could speak English, I tell you, you're really stacked. And if you could speak English instead of American, I might understand what you mean. Ouch. Skip it. 
looking for somebody? Mm -hmm. Your little pet's there. I'm a correspondent from the Apex News Service, and I'd like an interview. They won't talk. But maybe you will, Mr... Quain. Steve Quain. Uh, I'm Catherine Alvin, and uh, our office wired me to get a story on you and your two Black Panthers. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I was born in Seattle, Washington, at a very early age. Uh, everybody said I was a singularly beautiful child. At the age of two, well, I... Should I have told you, Mr. Crane, this is just going to be one story, not a serial. Much as I'd love to hear about your childhood, could we uh, get to the Panthers? Raja, Ronnie, Miss Catherine Alvin. Well, you don't think we hurt their feelings if I don't shake hands? You'll have to pardon their manners. They don't like trains. As a matter of fact, I haven't been able to discover anything they do like. Where are you taking them, Mr. Quain? I'm uh, chaperoning them from Rome to Paris, then aboard ship back to the USA. The adventurous young American who is daring the perilous trip with two ferocious panthers, told our special correspondent, you're doing this just for the excitement, the thrill? Yeah, for the uh, thrill of 250 bucks cash and a free trip to the United States. Told our correspondent that the challenge of adventure was his sole reason for making the dangerous journey. You confirm my opinion of newspapers. How did you happen to be in Rome? And why are you going back to America? Well, I, uh, I happened to be in Rome because that's where my dough ran out. After uh, kicking around Europe trying to pick up a fast lira, franc, mark, pingo, zloty with notable lack of success, I'm now heading back to try to pick up a fast dollar. Bradley Circus came through just in time. I'm a trifle puzzled by their colors. Uh, they were in a rich man's private zoo outside of Rome. He used to have the trainer run them around in a couple of leashes until he found out they preferred trainers to milk. That reminds me, I brought something for them. A week ago, they had to fight me for this. Go ahead. Hey! You know that old gag about eating off your hand? They will. Which is which? Roger, he's the male. He's got diamond-shaped studs in his collar. Ronnie's his mate. See what you can learn from wild animals? He and she are having a drink together. You mean when in uh, Milan, uh, do as the Panthers do? Mm-hmm. There's a bar across from the station, Angelo's. I've uh, got two hours before my train leaves. I'll meet you there in an hour at 10 o'clock. Why waste an hour? I have to stop in at my office first. Till 10? I'll be there.
stata? Ah, io ho stato in casa. E state aspettando che fino un'ora? Ah, un'ora, mezza ora. Ma che fa la casa? Ma che cosa mi fare? Cosa mi fare? Sempre sta aspettando che fino un'ora. Ah, la perdona me. State zitto, from two wild animals. He and she are having a drink together. <laughs> so you got rid of it. Now, Gormans, we are through playing with you. Where is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Not so impetuous, my dear fellow, please. Ah. I haven't very much more time to waste on you, Gormand. Perhaps if I tell you how much we already know, you realize how foolish you are being. When Anton Trezak, late Prime Minister of my country, committed suicide, it cleared the way for Peter Marco and our party to take over the government. It would be tempting to have an academic discussion with you about the so-called democratic ideals of the late Prime Minister. But I'm afraid that the time is too short for such abstraction. Yes, Malco had Trezak assassinated. You know it, I know it, he knows it. Even the British Intelligence Service knows it. But what they can't prove won't help them. My friend here puts it crudely, but concisely. Unfortunately for you, the proof of Trezak's assassination by Marco and all of that extremely damning evidence is in that microfilm you carried here from Istanbul. It is not expedient, shall we say, for that microfilm to reach British intelligence to be given into the hands of the United Nations? No. I think you're too intelligent to require a further <laughs> argument. Here. Five hundred American dollars for you. Now, where is it? Don't! I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you! It's in his collar. The panther. In his collar. Why, he's lost his mind. It's true. I swear it. It was all prearranged by British intelligence. The girls hid in the film in one of the panther's collars. Then the last car of a freight train, leaving for Paris tonight. You can't go and see for yourself. Then, when you found it, you can set me free. <laughs> the Paris freight, what track is it on? One moment. Train number 745, track 19. Do you happen to know if two panthers are being transported? Yes. I was speaking to the young American this afternoon. It's an unusual cargo. How train. soon will the train leave? Number 745? Yes. It had left her 10 minutes ago. Full ray telegram, Signorina. 
Arthur Morton, 343 Boulevard Saint-Germain, Paris. Brother and sister just left. Brother bringing package. Meet them without fail. Love, Katie. 1500 lire, signorita. Grazie. I wish to place a call to Zurich, Switzerland, for Signore Emile Vanay, V-A-N-A-Y, at the Hotel Bristol. Vanay speaking. What? You bungling fool! I shall have it attended to. At break. Yes, break. Good morning, Mr. Quain. I'm Dr. Stahl. Good morning. Where are I? You're at Brieg, Switzerland. And this is the Hotel Hermitage, of which I'm the proprietor. Guess I'm still woozy. I thought you said you were Dr. Stahl. Must a physician always dwell with the infirm? I like happy people. So at some hours, I'm Stahl the physician. At others, more pleasant hours, I'm Stahl the innkeeper. I remember jumping from the freight car, a runaway. You were very lucky, Mr. Queen. You only suffered a slight concussion. Still enough to keep you unconscious for several hours. The Panthers, where are they? Mr. Queen, inkeeping, yes. Medicine, yes. Panthers, no. They are strictly Captain Hymer's province. As a matter of fact, he's been waiting to see you. Captain Heimer of the Swiss Armour, Mr. Quain. How do you do? What about my Panthers, Captain? Your Panthers are not only alive, they're free. Free? The freight car was smashed. They escaped. I regret to tell you, Mr. Quain, in escaping, they killed your companion. My companion? A 
horrible sight. He was completely disfigured. Unidentifiable. You were very lucky, Mr. Crane. Incidentally, we identified you by your papers, but your companion had none. Car broke loose. What caused the accident? Well, there was no accident. The car was uncoupled and a chain was placed across the track. Sabotage, unquestionably. For what purpose, we cannot imagine. So I was sent down here in command of a detachment of troops to warn everybody in this district to be strictly on guard and with orders to hunt down your panthers and shoot them on sight. If you shoot those panthers, I may have to swim the Atlantic Ocean to get home. Sergeant Magros, your squad will search North Valley. Sergeant Rocher, take your men along both banks of the river. And Sergeant Fitzer, the forest detail to the foot of the glacier. At first sight of the Panthers, shoot to kill. Platoon dismissed. Ah, Steve Quaid, I presume. I'm Chris Denson, and this is my friend Van Ordinaire. We've come in to wish you a speedy recovery. Cheers. Oh, what's the matter, old boy? Did Dr. Stahl prescribe this? No, I did. Go on, drink up. Nice bouquet, isn't it? You're not a wine salesman, are you? No. I'm what's glamorously known as a foreign correspondent. Actually, I'm an errand boy for the European News Service. And this is one of my errands. Have you heard anything about the Panthers? Well, I've heard about nothing else since I got here this afternoon. Everybody in the neighborhood's in a perfect panic of fear, and practically nobody but Heimer and his soldiers dare move out of doors. And they haven't killed them yet, huh? Killed them? They jolly well haven't even caught sight of them. But they've come across two sheep and a car that were finished off by your beasts. Now, look here, old boy. I've been doing this sort of thing for quite a few years, covering everything from wars to asking old ladies how they managed to reach their 100th birthday. Off the record, of course, it's just a publicity stunt, eh? Yeah? What makes you think so? Oh, come off it. Absolute circus stuff. Obviously, I mean, it's great publicity for Bradley's. You can't deny that, can you? No. Oh. No cats, no cash, eh? That's rather hard luck on you. I still say it's great publicity for Bradley's. I'm glad you like it. it makes a very pleasant change from my usual routine. Nice view. Well-stocked bar downstairs. I shan't mind spending a few days here. Welcome, Echo Phelps. I see you received my telegram. Yes. I have several bags in the car and some guns. Uh, how about my dogs? Oh, we have some very nice candles in the stable, George. Thank you. Want to come in? I've had a long drive. Will you join me in a drink, Doctor? It's a pleasure, sir. Would you care to register? I'm Captain Heimer, sir. I know you by reputation, Herr Coppell, and may I say I'm very glad to have you with us. Thank you, Captain. Shall we go? Yes. A 
representative of the English press, Mr. Denson, Herr Coppell. Ah, Coppell, the hunter. Evidently famous, not so fleeting as I had thought. Herr Coppell, good hunting. Thank you. The same to all of us. Ah, my restless patient. I thought you might be joining us shortly. You must be Mr. Quain. I'm greatly indebted to you, sir. Greatly. Meet Paul Coppell. Biggest of the big game hunters. He's shot everything there is to shoot. Oh, except a pink elephant I once saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite everything, my dear Mr. Quain. Which is why I shall be eternally grateful to you. How's that? Well, because of a very severe attack of tropical fever, uh, which debarred me from further hunting in Asia, I had resigned myself to never getting a black panther, the only great quarry I still lacked. And now you, in the guise of fate, have accomplished the impossible. You have actually given me back my, I would say, my missed opportunity. Pour me a brandy, will you, doctor? And don't tell me I'm not well enough. You know, you give me a good idea for a Sunday article about you, Herr Coppell. Panthers in the Alps, eighth wonder of the world, eh? <laughs> Mr. Quain, when your panthers broke loose, you emptied my hotel of guests almost overnight. Now you're filling it again. Probably some more of the uh, workings of fate. Ah, that must be Monsieur Paradou. He telephoned this morning to secure a room. Well, don't tell me it's another correspondent. I rather hope to get an exclusive out of this. Well, as long as he is not another hunter, I really don't care. No, he informed me he was an artist from Geneva. You know, magnetic personalities, these cats of yours. You want them alive, Heimer wants them dead, Coppell wants them as trophies, and I want to write about them. And I hope to sketch their likeness. Maybe you boys better get in line. Gentlemen, Monsieur Paradou. A pencil is not much of a weapon, Monsieur Paradou. I should think the escaped panthers would frighten you to death. <laughs> they do. But I came here to face my fear, in the hope that my fear might die. After all, these are not ordinary panthers. <laughs> what I mean to say is, the world has always cherished rarities, and black panthers are very rare. Monsieur Paradou has a viewpoint. Well, from an artist's standpoint, these panthers represent more than just fierce jungle creatures. They symbolize evil, a man's subconscious desire to control evil. Their former owner in Rome perhaps understood this when he decided to collar his beasts. And this is the picture I want to try and capture. The two black panthers, the two faces of evil with their graceful necks, seemingly encircled by civilization, with colorful brass-studded collars. Preposterous. I've heard nothing about collars. Mr. Faraday was right. They do wear collars. Whoever wrecked that freight car didn't know what they were starting. Or did they? When is the next train for Paris, Doctor? Well, there's one just before midnight. Good night. Unsociable, chap. Well, even with colors, I'm sure the cats aren't as colorful as their hunters. Or as ferocious. What do you mean, I'm late? Our date was for 10 o'clock last night. Oh, well, you see, I... Don't tell me you followed me all the way to Switzerland to apologize. Don't flatter yourself. I followed the Panthers, not you. They make an even better story now than before. The first report of the accident said you'd been hurt. And you were worried about me, huh? Of course I was. Look, sister, anybody can play me for a sucker once. Now, what makes you think... But I don't like it when somebody thinks they can hook me twice without even changing the bait. If you'll only give me a chance to explain, I... You're a fool. Maybe I am a fool, but not too big a one to know that I got shoved into something I don't want any part of. All of this didn't just happen. Somebody makes a runaway out of my freight car, tries to kill me. The Panthers take care of him. All of a sudden, this hotel is getting crowded with guys who may or may not be what they claim. 
And this all happens right after you make a date with me and then stand me up. I don't know what this is all about, and I don't want to. All I want is to get back to the United States, like I said. Suppose I tell you that there's something vitally important hidden in the male panther's collar, and I have to get it back. Don't tell me it's the plans for the flying saucer. I can't tell you what it is. I'm not allowed to. All I can do is ask you to help me. You're cute. What's in it for me? Oh, nothing. And if you're an example of American chivalry, I'll do better by myself. Good luck. Excuse me, sir. George. Yes, sir? How long does it take to walk to the station from here? Oh, no, not more than 10 minutes, sir. Okay. Thanks for everything. Thank you, sir. Uh, who's the uh, character who just arrived? Just arrived, sir? Oh, but I don't understand. The new guest. No new guest has arrived, sir. Oh, you mean the young lady? Oh, doesn't matter. So long. Talk fast or I'll be forced to use... I, I think maybe I was wrong about your chivalry. Don't kid yourself. I just wondered who your boyfriend was. I'm glad you did. You know this guy? I saw him in the railroad station in Milan. All I know is that he's one of the ones against me. Any idea who the rest of our opposition is? I looked at the names in the hotel register when I got here. Coppell, Benson, Paradou, they meant nothing to me. Paradou. He mentioned the Panthers' collars. He did? I look forward to seeing this Paradou. Perhaps I'll recognize him. I'll call Captain Hymer. No sign of them. You circle around. Prowler you and Mr. Quain caught last night has turned out to be quite a prize. Really? The Greek police to whom I handed him over informed me early this morning that he's wanted in Milan. For murder, no less. Good heavens. He and a confederate killed a man named um, Gorman. But they had already arrested the other man and sent out the alarm for this one. I wonder what he was doing here. I have... 
Excuse me, Captain. You're wanted on the telephone. Thank you, George. Excuse me. And I must say, the addition of a charming girl to our company makes this a perfect holiday. Even though she is a competitor? My dear Miss Alvin, I can only regard you as an ally. <laughs> These rifles, Monsieur Paradou, are much more accurate than any army rifle. I know little of such things. Well, it seems that our heroine here escaped not only a sneak thief last night, but Heimer tells us the man turned out to be a murderer. Oh, I think you've met all of us except Monsieur Paradou. May I introduce Monsieur Paradou, Miss Catherine Alvin, a fellow reporter. Charmed. It's so necessary to ask your profession, Monsieur. Ah, the dark, possessed look of the hunter. But not the man. I see no trace of kindness in it. Oh, Monsieur Paradou isn't prejudiced. He'll also sketch the panthers without kindness. I told you I'll be able to fix you up. You see, we usually have enough clothes for our hunting and skiing visitors. Morning. 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 I say, Morning. take a look at this, oh boy. Oh, pretty good likeness. I'm glad to see you included his rifle. Well, drawing Herr Coppel without his rifle would be like drawing the panthers without their fangs. Thank you, Denson. I consider that a compliment. The panther killed one of my men. Did he get the panther? No. I think we'd better go in groups. May I look forward to your company, Miss Elvin? Yes. Thank you, Hacopel. I think I'll tag along with you two. We reporters must stick together. Well, I guess that leaves you and me, Quinn. Yeah, perhaps we may achieve our objectives. Take him down to the village. Any sign of the panthers? No, Captain. Not enough snow to follow their tracks. These two can. <laughs> I'm going up to the lookout post. Yes, Captain. kidding about those dogs. They're good. I'm positive Herr Coppell isn't kidding about anything. Very lucky today. Yes? Perfect day, perfect quarry, and you as my companion. Idiot. I had a perfect shot. I couldn't have missed. An excellent shot, Mr. Quain. I missed, that's all. That's what I meant by an excellent shot.
My dogs are very restless tonight. That's Sabina. She's always the leader. And of course, like all of us poor males, Rex is her devoted follower. That's a very nice story, my dear. I should have let you write mine for me. You sound surprised. Well, I find it very difficult to believe that a pretty girl like you could be a grubby newspaper hack. Dr. Stahl, could George take this to the telegraph office right away? Of course, Miss Ullman, George. What about your story? Oh, I, I filed that this afternoon. I want to keep my head clear for my evening's drinking. I must go out and quiet the dogs. Uh, will you join me? Maybe afterwards we can go for a little walk along the lake. Later, perhaps. Just now, I like to rest and relax. Well, it's too beautiful an evening to waste in a smoky room. Excuse me, old boy. Not only smoky, but crowded. Um, you prefer the wide open spaces? Under certain circumstances, yes, but I've learned how to be patient. Mr. Quain, you're in check. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. <laughs> Perhaps Mr. Quain is still meditating on his bad shot today. Well, tomorrow's another day. I was angry for a moment, my friend, but I must admit you deserve the first shot. You mean the uh, first miss? Well, I wouldn't have missed. Are you a good shot? Oh, I'm an absolute William Tell. With clay pigeons and ducks in a shooting gallery. But when it comes to live animals, I'll stick to feeding them candy and nuts. No hunting instinct, eh? Shall we say, no taste for it? I hope you will try one of my guns tomorrow, Quinn. Thanks, I'll do that. Maybe I'll have better luck. Is it finished? May I see it? The best I could gather was a rough impression. You're very talented, Monsieur Paladou. It has tremendous feeling of strength and power. It was just a sketch. Good morning, Miss Albert. Where is everyone? Oh, such excitement this morning. Her Coppel's dog, Sabina, broke out of the stable during the night. Sabina? Uh, Her Coppel was very upset. He rushed off at the first light of dawn with Monsieur Paradou and Captain Heimer. Excuse me.
Sabina. She was such a brave animal. Come on. Asylum. Steve! Which one is it? Couldn't see the collar. Can you handle a rifle? Why? I thought maybe you could cover me while I try trapping the cat inside there. I'm sure you can handle a gun much better than I can. Let's go. going. If you feel something shaking, it's my knees. <laughs> Too bad you haven't got some more of that drug sausage right now. We've got to get a look at his collar. There's Capel. And Paradou and Heimer, they would have to turn up now. Looks like that collar will have to wait. If I can catch the other one, I'll be back in business. I assure you, Mr. Crane, as soon as I can reach my superiors by telephone, I shall have authority to have this murdering beast destroyed, regardless of whose property it may be. I'll be talking to your superiors, too. Dashner, you will remain on guard here till midnight, at which time your men shall relieve you. At the first sign that a temporary cage may not hold, you will shoot the panther. Understand? Yes, Captain. This animal has killed for the last time. Well, we'll all feel the better for some dinner. Don't move my easel, please. I shall come back a little later when the animal is less restless. After all, as long as they don't know it's the wrong panther, we're that much better off. That's one reason I didn't want Hyman to shoot her. She'll keep their minds occupied while you and I get the other one. I hope. A red jack on black queen over. Why don't you get lost? It's a bit stuffy in here. I think I shall go out and get some fresh air. Sociable chap. I 
say, Coppell? Where on earth are you off to? Well, the moonlight is too fine to waste. Well, you don't mean to tell me that you're going stalking at this time of night? This is what we call a hunter's moon. Almost looks as though you didn't want the rest of us along. A night hunt is a dangerous thing, Quain. At night, the eyes of a panda see much better than those of a man, and the hunter may find himself becoming the hunted. Just the same, if you don't mind, I'd uh, like to come with you. Suit yourself. I think I'll join you both. My instinct tells me there may be headlines in the making tonight. Don't overlook the possibility that, uh, that you might make them. Oh, really? Oh, what an unpleasant thought. Oh, I think I'll take my courage with me. If I get a good story, I'll share it with you. Watch yourself, Steve. You're cute. You're worried about me. Keep an eye on Perry to install. All right. What is it? What's the matter? Your guard's been knocked unconscious and the panther's dead. Hurry, hurry! No, Captain. Someone must have hit me from behind. How did you happen to find him? I came out here to finish my sketch after taking a walk. I found him lying there, just regaining consciousness. The poor fellow evidently stood. I think you will be far ahead. Come on.
ready. trap for the panther. Or for us. Quinn, you take Rex. Move slowly in. I'll circle to the left. Anything I can do? Yes, stay behind me and don't get in the way. And when you feel you're close enough, let Rex go. We'll try to drive the cat out into the open. the collar out here and I'll let you get away with your life. It's your last chance, Quain.
Steve. Steve. Lie still. Right pocket. That ought to put you to sleep in no time. I'd much rather stay awake. You do what the doctor says. Beginning tomorrow, I'll need an apple a day. You can thank Miss Alvin that you feel as well as you do. If she hadn't applied the tourniquet that quickly, you'd have lost much more blood. Thanks, Doctor. What did Heimer say? He's perfectly satisfied that I had no choice but to kill Danson. And that Danson killed Coppell. I never figured Danson. I, uh... Good night, darling. We have plenty of time to talk in the morning. I, I wanted to ask you about the morning. Go to sleep. In my capacity as a doctor, I prescribe a hot toddy for you. In my capacity as an innkeeper, I shall proceed to make it at once. I'll be glad to take my medicine. How is Mr. Quinn? He's resting. Dr. Starr gave him a sedative. From what Captain Hymer told me before he went to bed, I realize we have a heroine in our midst. As a timid man myself, let me congratulate you upon your courage. I just didn't have time to be frightened. Good night, mademoiselle. Good night. Here, my child. After what you went through today, this ought to do you good. I can't decide whether you're better as a doctor or as an innkeeper. I sometimes have my doubts which profession is the more difficult one. At least, when I lose a patient, he's no longer in a position to complain. With a guest, it's different. <laughs>
came from Steve's room. He must be awake. name. What have you done to him? Nothing yet. But his bandages. It occurred to me that you might have taken Dr. Stahl into your confidence. And the bandages would have made an excellent hiding place. Hiding place for what? I don't understand. Quite obviously. But this young woman does. Please let Dr. Stahl take care of him. He's quite safe. At least for the present. And your evident concern betrays you. A romantic interest is so often a fatal error for those in our profession. Now get over there. What are you going to do? For the moment, I'm merely going to awaken him. Where is it? Wake up. I haven't all night. What do you want? Catherine. Pay attention to me, not her. Heard them. Where's the microfilm? Where is it? Since you were unconscious, probably from shortly after the time that bungling fool Denson shot you, quite possibly you don't know where it is. No doubt our clever little lady knows where it's hidden. As I told you, the romantic interest is always a mistake. No, no, don't. in there, in one of the bullets. hiding place. I congratulate you, mademoiselle. You seem to be nervous. There's no need to be, providing you're telling the truth. Well? I need that to take the bullet out. That's the way I did it before. Go ahead. But if you're under the misapprehension that you can load that rifle and use it, it will be the last error of your life. in one of them, that's all.
Kattenheimer! Before ending this quiet and restful vacation, there's a couple of things I'd like to know. Number one, what's that microfilm all about? Will you please tell me? Tomorrow, as soon as we have delivered it in Paris. Next question? Where is it now? In all the excitement, I forgot to tell you. In one of these. Well, how did you know it wasn't in one of those you opened for Paradu? I didn't. I just had to chance it. But there were five bullets, so the odds were in my favor. What a girl. I'll admit it was the biggest gamble of my life. Up until now. What do you mean? I, uh, thought you might like to take an even bigger one. For instance? Me. You're cute.